The Dusty Futon Podcast is a product of the Dusty Futon LLC and Dusty Futon Productions. Go to DustyFuton.com for more information. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another season of the Dusty Futon. We're going to start this season off with a brand new episode of The Producer's Corner. For most of the season, we're going to feature artists brought to us by the global leader in empowering independent artists, Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation has been helping millions of artists for years reach worldwide audiences and connect them with opportunities within the music industry. It's an amazing promotional tool, and they reached out to us to provide us with some of San Diego's most talented artists. This first episode is going to feature an amazing Grammy-nominated, multiple award-winning Latin artist named Manny Cepeda. Music is in his blood. His family's been part of it for five generations, and we talked to him about his brand new album that came out in 2017. The precision and musicianship of this guy is absolutely amazing. Well, enough about that. Let me go ahead and just jump right into this episode of the Dusty Futon, The Producer's Corner. Uh, Manny Cepeda. Cepeda? Cepeda. Okay. Right. All right. I'm good to go I'm when you're good ready to go. To go. All right, cool. Break us in. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming off of a um, hiatus or it's a break. It's been like a month and a half <laughs> since you and I have seen each other. Welcome back to the <laughs> Dusty Futon. Futon of dustiness. <laughs> Woo, My right. name is Dirty Disciple, and I'm here with Big John. What? What? We what? Chelsea Scott's in the house. Ooh, We're here at Second Fighters. <laughs> Here at, we're here at Second Story Studios in Escondido with our guest, Manny Cepeda. Cepeda. Damn it. Cepeda. We're here. <laughs> he butchered it already. Wow. Manny Cepeda. There, there you go. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <laughs> there we go. We got the that was, intro. That What's was up, Manny? Uh, bro, that, 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 un- that was the silence right there. I know. Beautiful, that was kind of awkward. Beautiful. I had to regroup. How you doing, man? It's uh, been, I'm doing great. It, I got a li- little backstory about me and Manny. Oh, um, wow. I met this guy uh, at college, at Grossmont Community College, where he was teaching music theory. And that's right. Right. And I tell you, honestly, his class is where I really became more passionate about the in-depth knowledge of what makes music. And from there, I've just been developing. That was like five years ago. Was it that long? Yeah. Four or five years ago. Yeah. I've noticed you've had uh, a lot of educational training and stuff like that in various parts of the world for your music career. Oh, yes. I've been around the world three times. And you've also done some touring and performing. In the world song, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Around the world, around the world. Is that the Blue Man Group or something? Yeah, oh, yes, oh, yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, Manny, you're a performer, uh, percussionist, composer, singer, arranger, and you have a band here in San Diego, right? Do you want to uh, dig into a little bit of that for us? I started all the way when I was seven years old, and uh, I come from a family that uh, is music, five generations of musicians, the, the Cepeda family. And uh, then comp- uh, my uncle, Rafael Cepeda, who is the, the big guy out there, he, you know, taught me how to write poetry, make sense, m- always make sure you tell a story on whatever you write. I came to the United States in 1968 and on a scholarship uh, from the Conservatory of Music of Puerto Rico. After that, I met a teacher who brought me to Illinois. So I, I did my um, bachelor's in music education there. All I did was study, study. I was doing 20, tw- 24 hours, 24 units a semester. Jesus. And then I was doing 12 in the summer, and I was doing six in post-section. So I finished the degree, a four-year degree. I finished it in two. So hard work is your oh, middle yeah. name. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I used to, in those days, you know, I mean, I came home, I came to the U.S. because my family didn't have any money, so... The way I subsidize myself is I used to work in the food system. Mm-hmm. So I will wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, work until 8, go from 8 to midnight and study, wake up again at 4 o'clock. And I did that for two years straight. Wow. So it was great. I mean, I loved it. I loved it. You know, there was a lot of pretty girls out there. So I don't know good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so I did that. And if you remember, in the 70s, Vietnam was still on. While I was doing the bachelor's, I got into the uh, 400 level, which is a graduate level. So I was able to finish my master's too. Three hours after I finished the master's, here comes the U.S. military. And they say, okay, either you come with us or, you know, 
will take you. Yeah. I mean, three hours. The draft. And I said, yeah, I, it, because the draft was still on. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I said, well, can I join the Navy? Because I knew the Army wasn't, my sister was in the Army, and nah, it wasn't that that good of a thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure, you can do the Navy. He said, can I have a second request? He said, don't, you know, don't, don't press your luck here. Yeah. I said, could you please take me somewhere where it's warm <laughs> for boot camp? And I ended up in San Diego, NTC. Wow. Wow. And then 31 years after that, I retire where? In San, San Diego, Diego, NTC. And then shortly after that, you teach me some music theory. Yep. And then now we're here on the Dusty Foods on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You want to hear one of the songs you've got? Yeah. What song are we going to play? Um, I don't know. El Mero Mero. Oh, that's a hot one. That's a hot one? Yeah. That song is going to catch, it's going to grab you the first five seconds of the song. It's going to grab you. Check it out. All right. That's uh, track number five off of his new album, Padre Carido. Correct. Uh, gotten a little, living here for so long, I've had to pick up some of it. <laughs> so, El Mero Mero. <laughs> Right away, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. Jeez. En la calle de Tijuana hay un hombre sin igual. Mucho le llaman el mero por su sabor especial. El chivo de pura raza nadie lo puede parar. Y las mujeres le llaman el tremendo gavilán. Le llaman el mero mero. Le da salida, mírate que gavilán, como le mueve la mija, rosa que estaba mirando y quería guarañar, le dijo traigan el mero, que yo quiero guapachar, oye me viene que mi ritmo llegó, yo soy el mero mero señor, escuche bien bailador, cuando yo sueno el tambor. Horns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait till I, did you hear who is playing? Okay. We'll definitely have to talk about that. Yes. <laughs> so what does El Mero Mero mean? Well, it, El Mero Mero is a saying from Mexico, and it's translating to American as the real McCoy. Oh. So when you say the, that's the real McCoy, they have an idiom that says that's El Mero Mero. A meta meta. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. nice. Yeah. playing that solo right there the drums yeah Tito Puente style yeah Mero, mero, mero. 
keeps grabbing you. I know. Like it's like it's slowly rolling you out, and then it's like, nope, come back. <laughs> Wait till you hear the ending on this. All right. This was like really, really heavily influenced on the Southern California friendship that I made. So you can definitely tell. Okay. Awesome. Man, that like rings Latin all over it. Yeah, it does. You bet. You bet. <laughs> well, I mean, he's Latin, so. All the ladies are well, paying yeah. attention now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, yes. I oh, want to yes. dance. <laughs> yep. yes. Bring your dancing shoes. I know, First right? thing I got to say, you said you did that solo, and that was uh, uh, Tim Tim. Paul, Tim Timbales. Timbales. I don't know why I couldn't mess that up. And that's the first thing you started playing, right? Yes, yes. That's my instrument. Dang. Yeah. And all I've percussion. Been, I've been playing that since I was seven years old. And from there, you ended up becoming a band leader. Yeah. That's just yeah. grow from percussion. That's awesome, man. Uh-huh. So you wrote that song? I wrote the song, and I arranged the song. In the recording, I played all the percussion, and I also played the pianos and sang it. Oh, like, what else? <laughs> and I sang the background with, with two other guys. That's so, awesome. Uh, multitasking. <laughs> Very much so. So uh, are these guys from your band, or are these musicians you put together for a session? Well, for this, I went to Puerto Rico. Okay. So these are all people. F- uh, f- I put all the musicians in a session, like you said. Now, th- hold on really quick. This is the brand new album, Padre Carido. Right. And uh, this just came out last year, 2017? Correct. Correct. All righty. Sorry, I just wanted to interject yeah. that. So um, now I had some super heavy players in this city. My, uh, first of all, the engineer is a Grammy winner, Latin Grammy winner, Manuel Calero. Then, you guys ever heard the name Arturo Sandoval? Yeah. Yes. The lead trumpet player of Arturo Sandoval is playing their lead trumpet. You opened for him before. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So you actually got him on your album now. Yes. Wow. And then uh, there's another band, which I don't expect you to know, but probably the Latin audiences out there will know Juan Luis Guerra, who is a fabulous, fabulous composer, graduated from Juilliard. His lead trumpet player and his lead trombone player are also there. Wow. Then we go into the vocal side, and there's two bands in Puerto Rico that are number one. Uh, Victor Manuel. I don't know. I don't expect you to, to know the name. <laughs> Victor Manuel and the famous uh, another salsa band, Sonora Ponceña. And two of their lead vocalists are there with me. So we're doing three of us are doing vocals. And then uh, saxophone players. I mean, it was, it was just totally amazing. We did this, by the way, in five days. But that song? The, the, the whole album. The whole album? Wow. wow. I mean, that song, the production on that song was great. Yeah, yeah, so much depth you have to that. So many instrumentation, so much instrumentation going on. That alone is remarkable that it was done in five like that days. That song in five <laughs> days, to me, that's impressive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, when the horns, well, the, first of all, the, the first one that came in was the bass player. Okay, and that was a stand-up bass, right? It, that was a baby bass. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's the baby bass, which is it's a stand-up bass, but it's a special bass uh, made out of fiberglass that most of the salsa band play in. You know, it's got a very distinct sound, as you can hear. It doesn't, yeah. It's not booming. Then I play the piano and the bass. We put all that together in one morning. Following that, we put the vocals together from about 1 o'clock until 4 o'clock. And this guy's never heard this music before, so I just went to the piano and said, okay, this is how you do this. This is the first voice. This is the second voice. Ready? Okay, let's go put it on. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. 
you know. <laughs> Give me my check. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's I'll, what that's what dealing with working with professionals is about. Tell me about it. Tell yeah. me. Then the following day, we put the two trombones, and again, there were hardly any overtakes at all. Wow. It just put it on first time, and they had the goal to tell me, "Was that okay?" I said, "Man, <laughs> you want me to kiss you?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! And then that was the next day. That was two days. Then after that, we brought in the Barry sax. Oh, and by the way, there's a, a guy playing uh, um, Cuatro, which is a guitar, but it's a folkloric guitar from Puerto Rico. He's 86 years old, and he's a monster. He's a total <laughs> monster, you know? Oh. What type of guitar is that? A guitar is it's a 12-string it's a guitar, uh -huh. but it's tuned different. Okay. It's tuned in octave, fifth, octave, octave, fifth, and it's got 10 string. It's called cuatro. It's very similar to the Cuban tres, which is another type of guitar. And these are, you know, the cuatro is a folkloric guitar of Puerto Rico. So that, you know, it was made in Puerto Rico. It was created in Puerto Rico. Wow. So, so that's, so uh, Maximo Torres was his, is, is his name. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's then, good. That's good. Yeah. Then, uh, let me see. With so, all the musicians dying lately, we need good ones to keep to stay alive yeah, as long. So we did bass and piano, uh, the two, trump, uh, two trumpets, the barry sax, then we did the two trombones. And again, this, you know, these guys are coming in at 11 o'clock in the morning, and they're blowing that. I mean, that's, that's hard stuff. I mean, I, on, on a 1 to 10, the way the, I write music, about a 12. I mean, it's... it's Pretty, and you heard the, the 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 percussion and the breaks. That was oh, it's really technical. That was yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. it's incredibly intense. But what what I like about your music is, like you said, it grabbed you right off the bat. But there was a lot of lulls, but they weren't like like boring lulls. But it's like right as it started to get to that point where group. you're like about it's, to yeah, and then you just smack and hit it again and bring it back in. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Yeah, definitely. And so, then the last part I did was uh, put the percussion. Mm -hmm. And I put conga drums, bongo drums, auxiliaries, and uh, the timbales. Did you write those parts, or did you kind of just play those on the fly? And no, no, no. I, I wrote all, this, all the parts. And then the last thing that I put on was my vocals. And I did that like at 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, <laughs> so all in one day, that whole song. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we, I mean, when we started doing the vocals for the, for the tracks, I said, let's go. You know, let's go one after the other. Because I've been working on them for such a long time. You yeah. know, so. so you, you uh, went in there with an idea in mind of what you wanted to do for that song to start with and then just put it all down or well, did it just come out? Well, I tell you what, you know, here, here's what happens. I, at home in my bedroom, I sleep on the left side is a piano. Then it's my bed, my wife. I remember this story. Yeah. So, and I always leave the piano on and it's on on. on eternal record so sometime I get up at three o'clock in the morning with something wake me up and it's an idea so I just turn over write it down press the record go back to sleep next morning I come and say what <laughs> <laughs> magic happens I in the middle you, of the night I, I you know I, I really look back and I said wow did I really write all these songs <laughs> And I'm continue. I I have new ones, and and it, the mind just never stops. Yeah. You know, I it's got to be a God given talent because even though I do have the education to go behind it, before the education happened, I've already was thinking about all this stuff. So. Yep. Just pointing out, uh, just with you, Manny, uh, in particular, is that you've done a lot of music theory, and that goes a long way with how quickly you can write music, your abilities. There's a lot of artists these days who don't have any music theory whatsoever. No, no, and they always and they all end up in my class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at least they go to your class. <laughs> they, they do, they do. I mean, I've seen so many musicians. I remember when I had Big John. You know, I was telling the people, "Yeah, why are you here?" Because remember, at the beginning mm -hmm. of the class, we always well because I play the piano, but I want to know more. That's because you hit a wall. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's let's get let's get that foundation on concrete instead of sand, and that's what does it. And it's it's incredibly important as a musician, and the all the good musicians, all the great ones, at once to get over that hump, that's exactly what they need. They have to know their instrument. They have to know their field. They have to even know more 
other than just what they play. Yes. And I've seen here on the futon in the past a lot of musicians that just focus on their own little circle, their own little globe of music. And, you know, that's fine and all if, unless you want to succeed, unless you yes. want to move on. Yeah. You, you, have, you have to do it all. You have to understand music from the, you know, all the way. And it's going to take a long time. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm 300 years old. That's what I told my student. And you've been doing this for a half a century. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. And it's also come down from generations, too. Yeah. Which is well, another that, big that's thing. that's the talent. Yeah. That's the talent. That's the God-given talent. That's in the genes. You know, I knew I was going to be a musician since I remember. Are those Levi's or yeah. in, the, in the genes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's in my genes. <laughs> Jordash. Is it in your back pocket it's, or it's what? In my butt pocket, <laughs> right here, right here it is. Those are Jordash jeans. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing comes between. Wow, you just pulled an '80s <laughs> you, you reference. Right? You remember that? And, and, I, and I follow, I follow through. Nothing, Nothing comes, comes between. between. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> We're all showing our age right now. Well, yes. No, but uh, yeah. I mean, you you have to know your stuff. You have to. Um, it, it doesn't happen now. There's a thing today called marketing. Yes. Okay. And marketing is what makes somebody bad look good. Yeah. Because sadly enough, a lot of the people there think only two things. Either music is pleasing or unpleasing or not pleasing. Yeah. Okay. They don't understand what goes into it. They don't understand what, what study goes into a musician to make what it does. That's the reason I always demand the pay. Yeah. You know, I say, oh, you want less? Okay. I saw, oh my gosh, the other day I saw this thing on, on Facebook, you know, a guy, it's a wedding guy coming in with his his uh, daughter and right. the father, and then the the caption goes, "You wanna you want a musician? Yeah, but I don't have much money." So it gives he <laughs> wanted three 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 bills, yeah. and this guy gave him just one. So this guy's going. The, sh- the crappy trumpet player at a wedding trying to play the Did wedding march. It? I saw Did that. You see that. Oh my god, that's freaking hilarious. But people don't have any idea mm-hmm. how he sounds nope it's just because it's playing trumpet it must sound good yeah and, that, and that's scary yeah the, it's like the listeners at this moment at this point in time listeners of music don't understand the variance of a ty- of your of ability of the musician and especially now with the digital music everything can sound the same mm-hmm. and if you but but like you said, the marketing is what makes a lot of these musicians yeah. climb up the charts. Yeah. And that's why some of them, they climb up the charts and disappear. Exactly. Or burned out. Yeah. 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 It takes a lot of knowledge to be able to put the feeling in the music and, and make it all work together. I guarantee you at every single one of your shows, Manny, that people are dancing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. a lot of these other shows. You saw uh, us, shows, right? We were know. all like, that, that, as soon as that song hit, <laughs> we're all like, I'm a white boy, man. I can't dance for shit. Play that funky I've seen him dance. Why, boy? You deleted the video, right, Chelsea? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And then they get creative and make transitions, like at the end that you were talking about, into a totally different style of music. Yeah. That's very hard to do unless you know how to make that happen well you know and here's what happened too there's not a single song that i write or anybody should write without a story yes okay if it, it the whole song is about this guy who is supposed to be a real mccoy and it could be a player it could be a carpenter it could but he's the best at it right okay and because it's metal metal which is southern california influence then I thought at the last, I said, wow, what a good thing would be to go ahead and put a, a zapatillo here, a Mexican little uh, signature. Mm-hmm. And, and it just flew. It, it just combined in itself. It's really, really good. Natural transition. Yeah, it, it was. It was a piece of cake. Now you said that's kind of a nod to your network here in San Diego. So yeah. tell about, talk about that a little bit. The influence in here are Puerto Rican, Mexican, Colombian, Venezuelan, uh, American, I yeah. mean, heavy, heavy Americans in here. And you know uh, how I grab them is the percussive, grabs them, mm-hmm. okay, and then the key that the songs are is important. Yeah. If you write something on a minor key, it's going to be sad. If you write something in a major key, it's going to be it's going to be a little more brighter. Mm-hmm. So that that does all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Well, you you want to hear another song off yeah, of this uh, new, new album? Which one is this? This one's going to be Padre. 
Carido. That's the right, the, and that means dear father. So this is the title track. Yes, and this is I actually dedicated this entire CD to my father. Ah, uh, this is track one, right? Yes. Okay, so track number one, Padre Carido, off of the Padre Carido album. Hoy canto con mi sentimiento. Aún soy muy honesto y lleno de amor ese gran señor. Él hizo con sus sacrificios un hogar sincero lleno de amor. A sus hijos le dio sabiduría y amor y su orgullo le dio de corazón. Ala le lo le le la la la. homenaje de amor y le quiero dedicar con este son Recordar Nice run. Yes, I like those. Padre querido te doy mi inspiración Tú me alumbraste con tu bendición Dándome toda tu luz Padre querido hoy te canto así Now we've already gone through two genres of music in that so far. We went to Afro-Cuban and salsa. And we're back to salsa. Salsa, again. yeah. And you started with that salsa, yeah. Those changes, man, they're awesome. Trabajador, ese es mi papi, señor. Y yo quiero cantarle mi son. Quiero cantar a mi padre querido. Te queremos dedicar y pedir tu bendición. Porque tú eres señor de señores, óyelo. Quiero cantar a mi padre querido. Quiero que todos lo sepan que tú eres la luz. Nadie te puede igualar, Padre querido. Quiero cantar. Ajá. Con emoción quiero cantar y con amor te voy a dar. Here comes another genre. Hillbilly music from Puerto Rico. Fast picking? Yes. Or is he finger? No, picking. Picking? Wow. And then back again. Yeah. The so that was my little father spot right Aww. there. That was your, your tribute to your dad. Yes, right there. Those 
crossing tempos. I like that. I know. It's a lot of counterpoint going yeah. on, you know, rhythms against rhythm. Yeah. And it, it gives you that tension, but it's a good tension. Yeah. I, I cannot believe that I actually did something, you know. I, I just can't. It's, it's so weird, you know. It just feels it's, so weird Yeah. that, uh, oh, my gosh, that came out of my head. Now, speaking of that, your first album, Roots and what is, how, what did I say? Raices. Raices. That album you put out in what 2014 2014 and it won best of best it, of san diego it, it got nominated for uh, latin grammy latin grammy yeah, that's what regional, it was original original music is this the one that got you best of cd or best of san diego something mm, um, no i don't think so best of san diego 2017 uh for this album that must have been that yeah. okay that was for this yeah, album yeah. now i noticed that the songs you gave us are all over six minutes long Mm -hmm. But on this first album that was nominated for a Latin Grammy, almost all of your songs are like pop sound, pop length, four minutes. So what's the difference between the two albums artistically? The, the Blue Album, the Raices Root Album, is exactly what it means. I went all the way, I traced myself back to my childhood, and that music is regional music from Puerto Rico. Uh, the, the, the genres are bomba and plena, which are very you know, my uncle's legacy and there, and he's considered the patriarch of those two rhythms. And he's Afro. on, you got a picture of him on the album, yes. Raphael. Yes, yeah. And, I mean, he died about five, six years ago, but he was considered the oak or the roble, meaning the, the main it's state. Like the trunk? The trunk of that, of, the, of Puerto Rican music, folkloric music, Afro, wow. Afro-Caribbean. So it's amazing, and... He was a composer too, you know, a percussionist. Uh -huh. So that's how I got all my all my mileage out <laughs> yeah. of it. But so that was he your major like your major influence to doing what you do? Yes, yes. Him and the entire family. He had like thirteen kids. Wow. So I, you know, my mom and I was a little one at home. So I would tag along with mom anywhere. Yeah. And she was the sister of of Tio Rafael, my uncle, and almost every weekend I would just go and instead of play in the in the backyard and stuff i'd be playing I'd be playing the drums <laughs> you know and, and dancing God, and doing that's this so stuff. awesome and that's how i grew up you know yeah so, so you've known nothing but music your life uh, it's, it's it's my joy that's incredible yeah. and speaking of that i want to point out that uh even though i knew you from before reverb nation is who connected us together for yes. this uh, and I want to shout out to them another thank you for hooking us up with some amazing artists. I've been with them for a long, long time, and it's a great, great company. They yeah. truly support independent artists yes. as much as they can. And, you know, it's, uh, as you know, it's very, very hard, especially competing with the money yeah. and with the marketing to be an independent. You know, and, but I'm like, you know, like Mike Angel, I just keep chipping at the, <laughs> at the marble and, you know, don't One of stop. these days, you know, if, if the Grammys is what this supposed to be, they will take you not for who you are, but the quality of the work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I uh, when I was looking uh, at the Padre Querido, I was looking and voting on the thing, and I said, well, let me just put Manny Cepeda. And out of come Song of the Year, I said, whoa, that's my name. <laughs> and then 
I kept, and they had another one that says uh, best tropical song. So that's the two categories. So um, with your music, um, is when you, like each song that you write, do you have an objective you set out to achieve? Yes, everything has a story. You know, uh, uh, Padre Querido again is, is exposed, well that one kind of did four, I think, four genres. It started with uh, Afro-Cuban, and then it went into salsa, and then went into uh, what I call, and it's a, a term of endearment, hillbilly music. <laughs> but the, the hillbilly music from Puerto Rico, and you know how, you know, hillbilly music is grassroots, yeah. right? So my father was that, you know, he was, he played guitar, and he sang the hillbilly songs of Puerto Rico, and the style that I played there is uh, is very typical of hill hillbilly music of Puerto Rico. Okay. And then I went back into salsa, and I think I finished up with what one calls. So I went through four different countries right there and genres just on that song alone. And I love that. And probably the reason is because I travel so much with the Navy band. Yeah, uh, around the world. Thirty-one years with that. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, it said on your your information, Navy Steel Band. I was the leader of the Navy Steel Band in. What's the difference years. between that and the Navy Band people always see? Well, the Navy Steel Band is a special band, just like the other. Because I was also in charge of the Navy Show Band, uh -huh. and that's the one that travels to the Caribbean, South America, all over the continent, and West Africa. Okay. Uh, the Navy Steel Band was stationed in New Orleans. And uh, you know the steel drums, the yeah. big, big steel drums. So they would take regular Navy musicians and say, would you like to be on a special band? Because it was a special band. And they will have to learn how to play the drums, you know, the steel drums. Oh. Which is, I mean, going back to zero. Get yourself in the room and start, yeah. start doing scales and then start putting them together. So... I got I got privileged to be, you know, asked to to be the leader of that band, and I did it for two years. Wow! Uh, there and then for there, I think I went from there to Naples, Italy. So it's just amazing, you know. So, um, does that have when you're writing and uh, you're telling a story and you have uh, you're trying to I guess put a genre and music styles together for the scene you're trying to create and the story you're trying to tell does that influence like the instruments that you pick for your songs or do you have s sort of a set instruments that you use uh, i uh, you know especially for a salsa band i like to have all the salsa bands in puerto rico the big ones have a lot of brass yeah. you know and that that is a common thing so the combination that i use i use a wall of sound with two trumpets two trombones and barry sax now the barry sax can go into the trumpets as well as it can go into the trombones combining itself and i don't know if you heard a couple of times also the barry sax will have an independent line from everybody else so it's, that's what you call those, are those competing rhythms like an answer call and answer type of thing exactly it's, well it's counterpoint yeah it's counterpoint so you know um sometimes i tell you sometimes i will do the chords and then come up with a melody, and uh, and then the arrangement. Once I start with those things, it just it just creates itself. Um, I cannot go to bed if I start an arrangement at ten o'clock. I'm not going to sleep that day. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> you got to be in the energy in the <laughs> you moment. Know, you know Otherwise, that well. What happens is one idea makes another, makes another, makes another. And that's how all those songs were created. It started with a simple little chord progression. And then from the chord progression, oh, okay, well, this melody will come in here. So oh, you, well, always, you always start with the music, like the piano, the musical side of it. The, then you add the texture with the drums. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and you, you, know, you have to think not only of just the drums playing, but what are the drums going to play? What breaks are they going to do so that will enhance the music? It's very complicated yeah <laughs> you know but uh but it's second nature to me you know and and it's funny when i play we do over here a couple of festivals we do chela vista harbor fest we do gator by the bay we actually brought salsa to gator by the bay that's an awesome awesome uh, event 15 years there and we've been there for five years nice so and then we do let me see chela vista harbor fest cinco de mayo old town we do that well, when I do that, I always do it with the big band. I wish I could work more with the big band, but I can. 
money. Mm-hmm. Okay, but when I do, I'm playing timbales, I'm singing, I'm doing the breaks, I'm also conducting the band, all at the same time. Well, that's the same thing that happens when I write a piece of music. Yeah, you know, one comes another. Then oh well, this break comes in here. So if I do and then the bass go you know, in Padre Querido when it started, it was a dialogue between the voice and the bass. Oi canto da 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 So anytime I had a pause, the bass came in, come in and and does something. And then from there, it's a big break, and then the piano and the bass start, and then the horns sneak in. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it just That's, that's great. That's right? incredible. And that that's all stuff that um modern music just doesn't, doesn't have anymore. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I keep I've been you know, I've been lately I've been trying to branch out and stop listening to all the awesome local music I listen to and trying to hear the pop stuff and the things that are out there and I click on all the genres and that's exactly what you said. None of the popular music has that depth to it. It's all about, like you said, I either like it or I don't. Yeah. Flat and simple. Yeah. Yeah. No one takes the time to actually listen and hear what's going on in the song. Hear the communication between instruments, the arguments, the the, the conversations, the exchange, and all that. And the one that can, the one that can hear, they will either like the lyrics, or the music, mm-hmm. or the piano. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, but they never tell you the entire thing because the the mind can only absorb so much yes so that's where the well i like it or the famous cliche i'm sitting next to somebody in a concert and say was that band good and if the band sucked and i tell him it's good he'll say the band is good yep yep it's like come on man i was just kidding oh oh okay i didn't know (laughs) yeah when you're uh, writing a song you have all these elements and objectives that you're trying to set out to achieve with that do you take your live performance into consideration as well? No, no. Um, the only thing that I take on the live performance is what story am I going to give them? Right. Okay. But the the trimmings, the meat and potatoes and corn and all that stuff, that happens beforehand. And, you know, my hope is that when I put all that together and I expose it to them, they would go, they might say, wow, that's really good. You know, and, and I catch on things that are, common that happens to everybody everybody has a father mm-hmm. everybody loves their father some people hate their father but mm-hmm. you know most it's, people it's still an emotional grab yes exactly and then the key the key is very important you know sometimes if you play a song that is either too low of a key or too muddy of a key it's not going to do anything especially with live instruments yeah yes yeah exactly so uh, another thing i wanted to note is all of your songs are in spanish yes and um and that you, you heard so far. Well, so far, yeah. And it looks like all the ones on the new album yes. are in Spanish. Yes. And you do have some English ones, but it, it doesn't matter with your music because there's so many layers. The voice is only like an additional, it's another instrument, and that's it. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like you don't have, you only have to hear, not understand the words to really feel that. Exactly. And, you know, the way we promote our big event here, we do. We've been doing that for four years, a big event in uh, headquarters, Seaport Village, over by with the Cheesecake Factory and Puesto yeah. Es. Yeah, yeah. There's a big, as a matter of fact, I did the CD release. I did it there, and we had over a 1,000 people Wow. there. And I got a picture I got to show it to you. It's amazing. That's awesome. But, uh, you know, again, they come over and they listen, and I don't use the full band there, but I use two trombones, rhythm section, and my core, you know, the, the vocalist. Every time... And everybody said, man, you got to play more of your songs. I said, yeah, yeah, but I, I, got, I also have such a mix of people that if I got to do my cumbia, there's certain staples mm-hmm. covers that I have to do, but then I always just put mine. And, you know, every time I put mine on, they say, wow. I say, well, okay, I guess they liked it. Yep. You know? Well, let's hear another one. Yeah. The let's... last song you gave us. Uh, change... How do you pronounce this one? Oh, Chango y Yemaya. Chango. Is it, uh, what? Chango y Yemaya. Chango y Yemaya. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you a story about this. Chango and Yemaya are deities. So my mom used to be a santera. So gods. Yes. Okay. A gods. African, African gods. And uh, she used to be a. Uh, it's not. It's opposite of voodoo. 
So okay. it's, it's instead of black magic, she's white to magic. Do white magic. Yeah. Okay. And she was, uh, um, I mean, she died on me at 44 years old. And in a short little time, she had an amazing, amazing life. You know, and this talks about the seven powers of, of the deities and all that good stuff. So. I can't. I don't want to introduce this one. It's you want to do. Manny the, already did. I, I think. <laughs> Let's get the intro. Okay, here is Chango y Gemaya. Con las siete potencias te quiero saludar. Chango con Amazing. Is that Arturo? Yes. Yeah. Yo te voy a dedicar así Esa humilde inspiración That wasn't in the originals. Uh, so he just... So he said, can I do this in here? I say, yes, yes. So he added that out of nowhere. Que me alumbre los caminos Me libre de todo little blues in there you hear that that's a little bluesy yeah, yeah the horns in the background mm -hmm. I just, yeah felt that's that. the blue scale yeah. that i use Los que guían mis Very African. Back to Cuba now. Ahora me voy para muchacha. really have full control over the tempo like every there's no mist like there's no, no, no looseness at all you've got it all nailed one takes yeah also one takes holy crap back to africa oye me llamame a la negra tomasa pa acá Yo te voy a dedicar así Esta humilde inspiración A Chango le puedo yo pedir Con todo mi corazón Que me alumbre los caminos Me libre de todo
vamos a pegar a la negra. En esta lo sigue. Wow. I know, I know, man. Oh my God. Yeah. It sounds so awesome, but that is so hard to do. That yes. clean yes. on a trumpet like that. Back to Africa, where we started. Nice. Killed that tempo. Ooh. Wow. Now, I was going to say real quickly, we did this in Grossman College uh, two years ago, and we used the Master Chorale Chorus for all those vocals. Really? The, yeah. co- the school's choir? Yes. Wow. Yes. And it sounded, oh, it's humongous. Incredible. That's awesome. If you listen back to um, what was discussed and what like Manny uses himself and mm-hmm. hit, what he's done through his whole music career to get to the point where he is now, and then listen to the music and break it down, it's all it's all about persistence. It's all about pushing mm-hmm. as hard as you can, never giving up, yes. and like you said, n- never letting yourself hit a wall. No, Once exactly. you get to that wall, instead of trying to you know just be better at that wall, always try something new. Always push yourself. Yep. And it's to the point, like, Manny's stuff, all it takes is for somebody to hear it. Yeah. And it, he gets big that way. He doesn't have to spend millions of dollars on marketing. No. no. And you, you know? can hear you on Reverb Nation, but where can they buy your CDs? They can buy it either at CD Baby, uh-huh. and they can go directly to my website, com. And that's M-A-N-N-Y-C-E-P-E-D-A. Correct. Dot com. Yes. Yeah, so they can find it right there. And uh, if they want to listen to it, uh, just to check it out, I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on Pandora. And oh, I'm you're on, on Pandora? I'm on Spotify. Hell yeah, man. Pandora is hard to get on. Yeah. It is. Yes, yeah, it is. I know. It's they had to screen, they screen you pretty good. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were actually able to, you know, I got in with the 2014 one. So when I tell them I got something, I was like, bring it. Bring it. <laughs> nice. So <laughs> That's awesome. So do you have um, a specific target market you're trying to hit out there? Because your your music is pretty world worldwide. And there's also areas where it, it may not be so popular because of the style and genre. The only, the only area that I think I'm not going to touch, if any, and, and I, don't, I think I will, would be the country music. But again... You got that little bluegrass blues yes, sound every now and again, then. Again, you know, and if they listen to the first CD, too, they're going to hear that, too. So it really is worldwide. Yep. Uh, and just like my experience has been and my career has been, I've never been in just one spot. I been able to go around the world three times mm-hmm. with the Navy. I was thankful for that. And, you know, Italy, London, uh, I mean, all of Africa, West Africa, all of the Caribbean, South America from the beginning all the way, you know, from uh, Colombia down to the Tierra de Fuego, which is south, uh, you know, the South Pole, Alaska, wow. Germany. You know, one thing we haven't really touched on is this is your career, right? Yes. And so you've been able to make a successful living as music, as your main career. And you've done a little things here and there, like teaching and, and uh, maybe com- and composing for other people. And, um, you know, th- it can be done without the multi-million dollar marketing oh, campaign yes. behind oh, you. Yes. Oh, yes. It's just all about trying and doing it. Well, you, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's, not a, it's not a chance thing, you know. The only chance then is actually getting discovered. <laughs> that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. That's the, that's the only chance, and and you must be patient with yourself, and understand that you know you got to put a good product out there. If you don't put a good product there, if somebody hears this now and say, "Oh my gosh, I just blew somebody off there," yep. you know, and and blew that's, us away. That's what it was. You know. Yep. 
So, uh, Manny Cepeda, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you guys Thanks so much. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and your talent with everybody. And it's great to see all of you. See John, Big John again. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. All right. We will see you guys later. Thanks for tuning into the Dusty Futon. My name is Dirty Disciple. This I'm is Big, Big John. John. We had Chelsea, but whatever. He ghosted. He got hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Big thank you to Manny Cepeda for coming out to take a seat on the Dusty Futon and to Reverb Nation for connecting us with him. Major thanks and kudos to Chelsea Scott of the Faux Fighters, Dave Grohl's doppelganger, for loaning us his studio space at Second Story Studios in Escondido. Thank you to Dirty Disciple of Noise Cartel Records for hosting this episode of The Producer's Corner. I'm Big John, your engineer, co-host, editor, and producer of this production of the Dusty Futon LLC. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to get all the newest episodes, and you can find out how at DustyFuton.com. If you love what we are doing and want to support our cause, please consider going to patreon.com slash the dusty futon and pledging to support us for as little as $1 a month. Thank you again for tuning in to this production of the dusty futon LLC. And oh, I got a funny story. Can I say a funny story? <laughs> of course, man. This is your show. All right. Check this out. So I'm directly from Puerto Rico, right? Just as green as you can get them. Yeah. Okay. I get on the bus out of here, Chicago. From San Juan, Puerto Rico to Chicago, Illinois. Oh, my gosh. Wow. September. Oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I have my instructions in a piece of paper because I, would, I didn't speak much English in those days. Mm -hmm. So I had the instructions. What bus to take, where to take it to. So I took this bus, sat on front, and gave the note to the bus driver. All right. From Chicago, Illinois to Joli uh, what is it? Normal, Bloomington Normal. It's about 79, 80 miles, somewhere in there. So I fall asleep. <laughs> right? I mean, I was tired, man. I come from San Juan, Puerto Rico, 11 hours. Yeah. I wake up, and the next thing I see is Peru. Okay? What? Peru. P-E-R-U. Oh. You know, oh, the, the I, I thought you say I thought you said Beirut. No, oh, no, no, no. Well, no, there's also a Beirut in the United <laughs> States, and a Baghdad, too, yeah. right? Yep, yep. So I see Peru. That was the first thing that comes to my mind. Man, I have never been in the United States. I say, holy cow, I took the wrong bus. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, honest, I never it's forget awesome. it. I thought I, w I went to Peru, South America. Not, you know, not Peru, Illinois. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, my heart was pumping, and I didn't know what to do. So That's said, a long <laughs> nap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, finally, I, I just waited and waited and waited. Yeah. So, holy cow, I took the rum bus. In there. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice little offshoot story. Yeah.